Yeah, buddies. It's the Bennington Show, the only father-daughter radio show in the history of radio. I'm Gail Bennington. And I'm Ron Bennington, or Ronzi, as I like to be called. Hey. <laughs> I think that's going to catch on. Hey. If you guys only knew how big that got with hey. uh, Fonzie. <laughs> hey. Was so fucking huge. I swear to God, all the other shows were like, we need a catchphrase <laughs> after that. We need an A. Yeah. There's a bunch of people working on it. Okay, what do we got? They've got A. I mean, I would think that would have to be the greatest catchphrase in the history of television. Um, I would say anything else pales in comparison if you think you have a better catchphrase. 844 Rock God. 844 Rock God. I doubt it, though. Because look at this, like something good happens. Hey. <laughs> or you're upset, right? Hey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you could do it all. <laughs> Somebody just lost a friend. Hey. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's really for special episodes. Yeah, yeah it was always there for yeah. special episodes. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, sometimes he would just look up at God and be like, hey, you know, like <laughs> right. if he had some good news. Give thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Give a good. Uh, he felt like he had a man. very good relationship with God. That's so weird, but I guess it makes sense. I mean, everything worked out for him. So he was always having to give it up. But I did like uh, catchphrases. I remember there was uh, a cartoon, I believe, named Snagglepuss. And he was kind of... Um, Shakespearean actor as well as being somewhere in the cat family. I'm going to say panther, <laughs> but I'm not sure. But he would always go like this. <clears throat> Exit, stage left, stage, stage right, even. Yvonne. Yvonne. And you're like, this is fucking amazing. Yeah. When I was a kid, every time you said I was like, that's good. <laughs> uh, let's go to Colby in North Dakota. Colby, what is the greatest catchphrase? What you talking about, Willis? That's, That's got to be good. up there. That's up That's there. Solid. That's a good one. That's a really good one. No, that was Gary Coleman, but I don't know what his name was on the show. I think it was Gary Coleman. I think he played himself <laughs> in that. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> and then he would drop that in sometimes twice. Right. I think I think a, a catchphrase really only should happen once an episode. Yes, tops. Because uh, you don't want people to tire of it. Once well, an episode is a lot. Well, sitcoms have always believed in the uh, catchphrase uh, and also big entrance. And Fonzie had both. You know, Kramer had big en entrances. Right. He didn't necessarily have a catchphrase. When Fonzie would walk out, he would start to act like he was talking and the audience would go so crazy. He would step back a little bit. <laughs> and you'd think that that would kind of take you out of the reality of the situation. Right. But it didn't. <laughs> Murphy in Canada, greatest TV catchphrase. Uh, I was thinking Matt LeBlanc, friends, uh, how you doing? Now, how you doing so was solid. so ridiculously forced. It was. Yeah. yeah. It was and bad. it was ridiculous and yet still kind of funny to me in an over-the-top dumb way. Well, first of all, why would he think it would work? How you doing? It's not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. He's saying that to a girl trying to sound as stupid as humanly possible. <laughs> It's generic and weird for, me, for anyone to I say know. that to a woman. It just really didn't uh, have everything that a good catchphrase needs, you know? Eric in New York, greatest TV uh, hey catchphrase. Guys. Hey. Yeah. Hey, guys. Love the show. Yeah. I got uh, J.J. Walker. Dynamite. Now, J.J. Walker would say dynamite. It was so giant that there were like dynamite thermoses, dynamite really? t-shirts. Yeah, it was fucking giant. That's a good one because I like... I like a catchphrase that you can use in a positive way because right. it comes up. It's just like your way of saying cool and you want everyone to catch on with it. I feel like dynamite's got to be like top well, tier. Here's the weird thing. He also had a sub catchphrase that was really never caught on. I loved it and would get in trouble for it when we would have the just one house telephone where everybody uses the same <laughs> yeah. telephone. Okay. But uh, JJ would answer the phone and go like this. Shello. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would do it. And my mom would yell at me. And I'm like, it's just Aunt Flossie. Relax. 
I think she would be like, I could have been the bank. I'll go, would the bank just fucking <laughs> stop doing business with us? Because I said shello. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I don't think my family ever got an important fucking phone call in the history of our family. <laughs> Jay in Michigan. Hey, Ronzi, Gail, how you guys doing? How's it going? Hey. <laughs> hey. Um, I, wanted to, Ow. I wanted to say uh, hello, Newman, from Seinfeld. Oh, yes, yeah, Seinfeld did have hello, Newman. Newman. And yeah. I told but you it wasn't story. every episode, so it was a treat when you got to hear it. Right. Yeah. I think that that is good. Yes, that is a, it's a good point. And it was also funny because he never said at first, he would be like, oh, hello, Jerry. And then Jerry would very <laughs> angrily go, say, hello, Newman. Right, and it's funny because I wonder if Newman was ever like, hey, how come my part isn't the catchphrase? Like, right. why isn't hello, Jerry? But yeah. it's like because hello, Newman was so over the top. Yeah, he needed, uh, I think Jerry needed that. Now, I told you that story that Jerry told on his show before, right? Yes. About when he did that thing. It's my favorite it's it's fucking so, story ever. So funny. Real quick for the people who didn't hear it the first time or don't watch comedians in cars. Uh, Jerry was doing a benefit show for, I think it was called the Hole in the Wall Gang, which was Paul Newman's camp for kids, right? And so they would invite rich people there. Everybody would throw in money and it would be like a one night a year. And, you know, it was nice. So they get Jerry there to do comedy. So Paul Newman comes up to him backstage. He goes, during your show, I'll just walk out there and stand next to you. And you just turn and look at me and go, hello, Newman, <laughs> to Paul Newman. <laughs> and fucking Jerry said the fucking, it was the biggest laugh of the night. Fucking, you know, the roof comes off. People are going so crazy. And, he, and then Jerry goes, and I didn't have anything to do with it, really. I didn't think of it. I didn't do it. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, I don't think young people would know how fucking great Paul Newman was. I mean, think of every celebrity you like stuck into one. Yeah. And that was Paul Newman. Because he was beautiful, sexy, and a great actor, cool, talented. and actually really talented. And drank a case of beer every day, race cars, <laughs> yeah, a guy's guy. uh, had a great wife, and then he also, uh, a great talented wife, and then also he's like, uh, I always make um, salad dressings for my friends, which is a fucking <laughs> hilarious thing. You know, I, I make such good salad dressings. But I'm going to put this out when nobody did shit like that. You right. know, like you yeah. didn't want to be associated with a product if you were a big movie star. And then I'm going to give all the money to these sick children. Yeah. Like and it was no a profits. fucking went gangbusters. Yeah. I mean, he's the he's, coolest. He was, every, he was fucking yeah. greatest. And... and obviously great joke writer too that fucking joke is hilarious <laughs> and he used to do gay jokes about him and robert redford back when nobody did gay jokes because they you know people right. they were both pretty and they were in movies together and then he would like uh you know be on a award show or something and he'd be like he'd get his word and he goes okay uh, Redford, put on the coffee. I'll be home in just a little bit. <laughs> he do these little things with people, you know, it had right. rumors that they were gay. And he just said, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I keep acting like me and New uh, me and Redford are fucking gay. <laughs> <laughs> Comfortable in his own skin. Uh, Stanley in Missouri. Best catchphrase. To the moon, Alice. Oh, that was an early one. Yeah. And that was the only kind of abusive one that I could think yeah. of. Yeah. Like he was it's talking dark. Yeah. Bang about, zoom. <laughs> yeah. Punching her so hard that she would go flying off the earth. I don't think that would play today. It probably would not. And yet for some reason it worked for them. Like it's weird that they were able to do it, but you you know that uh uh that was back in the time where it was okay to right. hit your wife. Uh Lady Trucker. No. <laughs> oh Holy my it god! Really is. <laughs> Hello? Is it real you? Hello. Yes, it's really me. Holy wow. shit. Good to hear from you. It's been years. How long? Yeah, it has. Yeah. Uh, How long have you been on now, Gail? It's like, like right after. Yeah, Gail I don't think that she's yeah. ever called the whole time Gail's been here. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, So, what's, what's your answer, Lady Trucker? Oh, the. the those noises Tim Allen makes is like, oh, 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 Now, it's, it's also very funny. That show used to destroy Seinfeld in the ratings. 
fucking buried Seinfeld. It's so weird. That show was a top sh- 10 show every year it was on. And I think it gets almost zero fucking rerun play. I've oh, never yeah. seen it. No. I, don't, I mean, whoever these people were aren't admitting that they, they were, were watching it. Yeah. They were families. A lot of children were watching it. My family parents. watched it. Yeah. yeah. You watched Arr? it for J- <laughs> JTT. He actually does a very good one for yeah. <laughs> All right. Good to hear from you, Lady Trucker. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Peace. All right. Peace. Uh, Mike in Delaware. Up your nose with a rubber hose. Now, that was one uh, from. Um, the Sweat Hogs, and that was John Travolta's show. Right. And because Fonzie got big, every character on that show had a catchphrase after that. That Like, that's not great, right? If you're like, each one of us has to have one, because I have a show that every single character had one, and I think it was too much. Welcome Back, Otter was the laziest show <laughs> ever written. Just Never absolutely right. You got to see it sometime, because yeah. you're just like, how did people get paid for this? But what was funny is he became the biggest movie star in the world when he was, you know, second tier. He was the kid. It was really about right. the teacher, Cotter, Cotter or Mr. Cotter, <laughs> as one of the catchphrases. <laughs> and then this kid becomes, at, you know, fucking Star Wars, basically. Yeah. He's a huge fucking star. Saturday Night Fever was so fucking big. And then he's got to go back with a new haircut on that show. Because he, he had, like, fucking long hair in the first couple seasons. Right. You know, he was like a 70s kid. And then he becomes Disco Boy, and everyone's like, I, we don't even know what to do with him. And then he's just started showing up like every other episode. They fucking ended up putting in a fucking, uh, a fucking hayseed that moved to Brooklyn for some reason. He was like a southern That's gentleman. That's a jump the shark for yeah. a show that it wasn't on like many seasons, right? Uh, no, no. But I mean, all you really needed to see was the first episode. <laughs> Four seasons. Yeah, I mean, that seems like but you see, have a desperate move. Like, put that. up the guy who was in the last season, Chris. I don't know what this fucking name was. And didn't Gabe Kaplan? He wasn't even in the last season, right? He held out for money too, and then his wife was just yeah, hanging she was around the with teacher. these. It seems like she. And, but she didn't start that way. But it seemed like she got banged out by these Brooklyn kids. <laughs> they they said Gabe Kaplan replaced him, but that's, I don't think that's right. No. Mm-mm. There was a Southern guy, and then he was known. He was a really good-looking dude, but like a Ken doll. And then he started to be known for the last season of a bunch of different shows. Like he was like the kiss of death. <laughs> you know, before we had Jump the in. Shark, it was just like bringing this guy. <laughs> Steven Shortridge. All right. Oh, Get a picture of him. You're, you're going to all recognize him. I know he was, uh, I think, with the nerds or something, too. There he is. The, all oh, the way yeah, over. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to him when he was young there. That's the way he would, all the way at the top, Chris, right there on the end. Yeah. You can see, yeah. like, that's the kind of good looks that a mom would like. Right. Not a fucking He's a nice, person. clean cut yeah. kid. And that hair, that feathered hair. Yeah. Who doesn't like it? But there's a show that had that... Uh, this exact thing where they gave every single ca- character a catchphrase. It was very lazy and annoying. And that was Full House. Full House, like almost every single character. All three girls had one. Wow. So there was, uh, you got it, dude, which was the little <laughs> the little one. Oh, and yeah. you got it, dude. <laughs> then Stephanie was, how rude. <laughs> and I don't remember what DJ's, DJ's was. was, oh, my Lanta. Really bad. Oh, my Lanta. Was one of them this? Rude and rude. <laughs> <laughs> I stole that from Stephanie. <laughs> that's his catchphrase. I had never seen the show, so I didn't know where he got it from. Now I get it. Um, <laughs> Joey had cut, cut it, it out. out. Danny was just a fucking guy who liked to clean. That was really his catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really have one. <laughs> yeah, all he did was just like, uh, oh, he, people went to him for advice, but that's not a catchphrase. And then um, and uh, Jesse just liked Elvis. Yeah. So he would say, like, my hair. Yeah, he would make hair references. But still, I think that's too many. And I'm sure Gibbler had one, too. And then on the new one, they tried to force holy enchiladas on some kid. (laughs) Yeah, they're trying hard. Paul in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm assuming uh, Ron would probably remember this before anybody else would. But there was a show back in the late 70s, early 80s called Alice. Oh, yeah. It was from the television, from the movie. 
Alice. Yes, and, and they, then Flo, Flo, the waitress, always said, kiss my grits, which I never really understood because I was probably like eight years old. I didn't understand what she meant by the grits part. Yeah, well, I still don't blame you because it doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. But she rose to where she was one of the most enormous stars in the world. And Kiss My Grits was... No, Kiss My uh, Grits yeah. didn't exist before that? Like, Or I, is that I, like a... Was it a common phrase? I wasn't Jesus? raised around grits, so I didn't have <laughs> right. any idea. I thought, was she trying to say tits? Kiss my tits? Oh, that's a good point. Why wouldn't it be a food that sounds like ass? Yeah. Kiss this glass. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go back and watch the movie, the movie's kind of dark and weird. Scorsese did it. Chris Christopherson was in. But then they turn it into just this feel-good diner sitcom. And then the guy who ran the diner was like an enormous star, too. And he was just like this big, gruff, kind of fucking talented, talentless uh, character actor. <laughs> <laughs> Tom in Long Island. Tommy. Tom. Hey. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, let's see. Aaron in Portland. Hey, guys. Love you guys and gals. Hey. hey. Uh, this, this is a bad one, um, but it stuck with me for 20 years, and no matter how old this actor gets and bald, I still just hear the sounds. Whoa. 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 Now, I never saw Whoa. that show, but I know it's that Joey kid, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Joey from Blossom. Yeah, because that uh, you would see on variety shows whenever they would have him on. Whoa. And then people still, isn't he like the born again Well, weird he was guy? just recently on the Celebrity Big Brother, remember last season? Oh, yeah, season? he was. And he was. Uh, oh, so he's not the born again weird guy. That's no, another guy. No, that's, that's um, Cameron Kirk, something. Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron. That's it. Yeah. What, but did, he, what did Kurt Cameron do? What was his catchphrase? Pains. Growing pains, and I don't what think he... What was his catchphrase? I don't think he had one. I don't think he... Like, he was just like, I'm the teenage son. Like, he, I don't yeah, he even big, remember yeah. Yeah. having, like, a, an in other than just, like, mom. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, being one of mom? those guys. Mom? <laughs> Where's mama? Where's mama? Awful. I wanted to say thanks for having Gail and I on uh, Bro Watch. You don't have to thank me. I want to thank you guys for being on my episode of Bro Watch. It was available was now great. on Apple Podcasts and on Google Play. Uh, if you just want to skip through the episode to just the Ron and Gail's ep uh, interview, just skip to minute 12. I had wow. so much more to say, but I barely was on the show. It was on uh, how long? Uh, eight minutes. Tw minute mm. 12 to 20. Wow. That is the guest spot. It felt very fast, and I guess that's because it was. So fantastic. you only did 20 minutes for your finale. Yeah, 20 minutes. 20 minutes an episode. You would have thought that yeah. would have been like a double double episode Should have been a double uh, eviction. eviction, yeah. <laughs> the Bro Watch listeners used to 20 minutes. What about Big Brothers? We did a 45-minute to 50-minute finale Lengthy. with uh, Gina Marie could not make it in. She... She canceled on us last was second. Was there a fucking Proud Boy uh, <laughs> thing lined up? <laughs> hey, I got an interesting thing for you. So you always said that Chris was lazy. That's why you got rid of him, yeah. right? And you fired him uh, on the yeah, show? I fired him from the show. Uh, I got the stats today. Yeah. Chris did two more shows than Vito. Yeah. There was two more bro watches than there were Big Brothers. Uh, your episode is episode 13. Wow. Uh... Vito's episode is episode 11. Weird. It's 12. 11? I always thought there was two I'm more. Good at counting. <laughs> I'm good at counting, and I put well, 13 weeks in. If Chris in. was this motivated when we did it together, it would have been nice, but he didn't show up. Yeah, but he wasn't weeks. on a hit show then like he is. Now. Yeah, I mean, now it's just Craig. <laughs> all these segments, it's fucking And yeah. plus, he had confetti drop. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. I wasn't expecting that, were you? No. Who did you guys pick to win? Jackson. It was Jackson across the board. Yeah. yeah. Same with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I but remember call. Paul. He was a lock too. Yeah. Twice. Twice. <laughs> he was Twice. Yeah. Twice that guy was screwed over. What do you call it? Shitty draw uh, jury? Is uh, bitter jury. I like yeah. shitty better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're talking best TV catchphrases. Let's go to Bill in Georgia. Howdy, Bankins. Hey, hey, man. Mine was Book em, Dano. Oh, that's a good one. And that's for... Uh, a cop show, not even a sitcom. That right. that never even got laughs. Right. But people used to fucking love it when he said book him, Dano. That's how much he's booking him. Yeah. Uh, Andrew in New Jersey. 
Hey guys, uh, this is a long time ago. Sergeant Schultz from Hogan's Heroes. I know. I know Nazi. Fucking brilliant catchphrase. You know, the stupid Nazi. Who doesn't love a stupid Nazi? <laughs> I've never seen an episode of so that show. He was uh, a fat guy, fat mm -hmm. Nazi, and he would be with uh, Colonel Clink. And then when things would go up and it would seem like Schultz had something to do about it, he would go, I know nothing. <laughs> and America would laugh all at the same time. The Nazi. That dumb Nazi. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah. Um, dumb and really friendly Nazi. <laughs> Mike in Arizona. Hello. I, uh, one of the greatest single one word catchphrases, the great Homer Simpson. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Simpsons had a ton of time. Yeah. I was obsessed as a child, and I thought it was it would last forever with Eat My Shorts. <laughs> you loved it, huh? I fucking yeah. loved it. You were Bart. <laughs> <laughs> and it did go. It didn't last very long. I said it a long time. Yeah, it got it like a one season, but it showed up on things. I mean, yeah. you could buy stuff that said "Eat my shorts," and it felt very edgy. You know, when you were a kid, yeah, "Eat my shorts" felt like yeah. I'm really saying something edgy here. Um, but out of all the catchphrases on that show, my favorite is "Ha ha." <laughs> This is fucking perfect. It's fucking got everything. Nelson. It's twenty. <laughs> Nelson's the best. She get a spinoff show. Did Millhouse ever have a catchphrase? Um, I don't think so. Then where's the ball? <laughs> Why did I have the ball, Bart? Why did I have the ball? That's a pretty good Millhouse. Which nice doggy. <laughs> So he's betting the horseshoe crab yeah. without his glasses. Nice doggy. I also like from that same show, Monkey Hate Clean. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the only written catchphrase I think in history. <laughs> look, at, look at Chris laughing he that at the it. fucking Simpsons. It's you still watch. <laughs> you love it. Peter in Ontario. Hey guys, mine is shared by many, many characters, but it's simply one word. Norm! Oh yeah, everybody oh, yeah. from Cheers would yell Norm when yeah. he came in. And then the um, the replacements had a song called Here Comes a uh, Regular. And Norm went around saying to everybody, um, that's a song they wrote about me and my character, <laughs> right? When I read that, I'm like, oh, that's fucking, you know, pretty cool. That's interesting. And I think he had said it for years. And finally the band was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he just made it up yeah i guess he just made it up or maybe somebody said to him hey this song sounds like it's written about you you're regular at the bar right you know <laughs> i mean i had no reason to think that norm was uh a lion now one time um i did a phoner with him and um he called the show so we pick it up hello and he goes hi this is uh george went and we all go, Norm! We just yell it. And he just fucking hangs up the phone. Oh, he was God. pissed. We get a call back from fucking Disney. We are so sorry. No fuck. You know, they were pissed. Uh, he calls back. Hey, guys. Uh, look, I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I was just trying to distance myself from that. It's been a rough day. <laughs> he, he fucking came back hat in hand. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. You know, I like Norm. There was no reason for me. <laughs> To make him sit through the shit. <laughs> and in that show that he had to apologize, maybe two or three. I mean, people aren't going to see him as anything but normal. Right, of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think at some point you got to own it. You know what I mean? You get a character like that. I, like would, hate, I would hate to own it, <laughs> Norm. I think he's all in on it now because I saw him at a, at a comic book signing holding a big glass of beer that just said Norm all over. Uh, yeah, well, what are you going to do? Yeah. You gotta he, has, eat. he has to, you know. He has to do that. Yeah. Tom in Montana, we're talking TV catchphrases. Yeah, oh, from the Newhart show, it was, uh, hi, my name's Larry. This is my brother, Daryl, and my other brother, Daryl. Oh, uh, yeah, that yeah. was uh, beloved. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, But what are you going to do with it? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's all. It just seems like a little applause for that, and yeah. then we move on. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, there was another catchphrase from Home Improvement um, that people liked. It's, I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> 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 That's a weird one to get on, but right. people did love it. Yeah. <laughs> huh? uh, uh. <laughs> Joe in Staten Island. <laughs> yes, you should keep that. No one else is using it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> how you doing? Hey, hey how's it going? 
Um, this one was pretty big for a while. Uh, Dwayne from What's Happening. Whenever he walked into the room, he went, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. That's pretty good. Yeah, we loved it. That's cool. And then every fucking episode, there would be uh, a chance for fucking rerun to do his fat boy dance. <laughs> He was like a was fat every dancer. episode? Yeah, every episode Fuck. he would be have a reason That's to start. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh I'm gonna go to this one because I don't know what it is. Chip in Iowa. Okay. Uh the, the original nineteen seventy eight Battlestar Galactica series came up with an ingenious way to say fuck on national TV and made up the word frack which Starbuck used when something happened. He'd say, oh, frack. I right. never yeah, I, I, I never I, saw I, this show. Never watched it either. Yeah. Yeah, and I, either. I love all that shit, but never gone to Battlestar. Why? And, I don't know. Doctor Who either. I never saw a Doctor Who episode, yeah. but it's been going on for like 40 years or 60 something. 60 years from like, it was started as like a radio. What? Yeah, it started like a, t- a radio what? show into a yeah. TV show. Yeah, they love it in England. They <laughs> fucking love it. It'll never get canceled. They're always like, oh, this year we're talking about having a black Mr. Who. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim, North Carolina. Yeah, Ronzi, uh I got uh, Fred Sanford. Uh, you know, he had the You Big Dummy. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, he had three or four more, but I can't remember all of them. It was well, just heart attack. The, the big one was uh, he would grab his heart when something upset him, <laughs> and then he would look at this guy and said, I'm coming, Elizabeth. <laughs> and we would fucking howl at his fake heart attacks. I'm telling you, that show was so fucking funny. I'm, I haven't seen it in years, but I'm going to still believe that it was actually funny. My dad would watch it uh, when I was very young. Yeah. And I loved Rolo on that show, who was no. really almost a pimp. <laughs> what, wasn't he, though? Yeah. I liked everybody except for Fred's son, his own son, Lamont, we no, thought was sucks. shit. <laughs> it wasn't fun. Pierre in Virginia Beach. Hey, good buddies. Uh, Family Matters, Urkel, did I do that? Did oh, I do that? that? Never saw one know that catchphrase, though. God, that's fucking annoying. Yeah, did a, I do that? It was a pretty big catchphrase, and when I was a kid, I had an Urkel doll. So you pulled the string, and he would say, did I do that? And then he also said, got any cheese? Which I didn't know was a catchphrase of his. I only know it from owning the Urkel doll. Got any cheese? Who gave you an Urkel doll? I don't know. Who I don't gave remember it. you watching that show. I didn't really. Yeah. So I mean, that's why the "Got any cheese" was news to me. I'm not even sure it was a catchphrase. Does anyone know "Got any cheese"? So he ju- he did really <laughs> like cheese. Like that was one of his big character points. He liked cheese and Shit's, polka music. Shit must have been terrible. You must have watched a ton of reruns. I dude, fucking. Did you know all these shows that you weren't old enough? I for. loved uh, '80s and '90s sitcoms. I watched them all day long. <laughs> I watched that show as. It was happening new episodes airing uh my family <laughs> and then my dad would always complain because there was like it was about a black family but there was like one white recurring character and i believe he was like a buffoon yeah and my dad would bitch why does the white guy have to be so stupid <laughs> you know now that you mention it every fucking black show would have a stupid right? white guy thing. <laughs> and sometimes he would be like a nerdy cop <laughs> yeah i think that was fucking family barriers yeah he was, I a, think fucking, he was a nerd like, he was probably urkel's friend my, or something my favorite one of those was on the steve harvey show the white kid named Bullethead, and everybody was like he's dumb because he's got a bullet in his head <laughs> wow jesus it's really dark yeah. uh don nanu nanu from mork and mindy nanu nanu i mean nanu uh... nanu were people saying that like uh repeating it <laughs> yeah out a little bit the they would say shazbot he would say shazbot i mean like i could see it on a t-shirt but like if you're bringing it up in conversation like if you're trying to work in nanu nanu i feel like that's kind of weird <laughs> <laughs> remember earl's really catchphrase Got any chips? <laughs> <laughs> There's no more chips. Yeah. Can I do that? <laughs> Got any chips and ginger ale? <laughs> uh, remember uh, Chris's early catchphrase? What's that? Yum yum, give me some. <laughs> yeah, give me those points. <laughs> yum 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 yum. You never even do that anymore for fucking I've lockdowns. Been, <laughs> I've been taking a lot of favorites. It hasn't been going well, Rock. <laughs> What's with you and the favorites this year? You know, I'm, th- this is a reset week for me. This is yeah. when everything turns around. I'm, I gotta admit, it's a it's a weird 
season now. Uh, it's a, a a weird haves and have nots. You're already saying there's only about five teams to pay attention to. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And there's just a ton of teams that are just. Is everyone tanking? Is like fucking two? Is half the fucking league tanking? Do you ever see a Steelers team that acted like this? No, fucking this is fucking terrible. Fucking Monday Night Footballs. The zero and three Steelers versus zero and three Bengals. Mm, <laughs> sounds like a good game. <laughs> Barn burner. <laughs> Sounds all like right. you should go all in on that one. I, I'm not going anywhere near that <laughs> Super thing. Super But no. <laughs> uh, Matt in West Palm Beach has a catchphrase from Full House that I think I missed. Matt. Yeah, yeah, Gail, I'm trying to remember, and I just jumped on the radio, so I don't I don't know if you mentioned it. But with Jesse, wasn't his catchphrase, have mercy? Have mercy. See, he oh, yeah, had one, one, too. Yeah. It was an did Elvis he, thing. Uh, have mercy. Did you guys say... The Uncle Joey, the uh, cut it out one. Yeah, yeah we got cut cool. it out, which is yeah. maybe okay. the best. We don't have Danny. That's what we're missing. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, he had nothing. I mean, he was like, what was his catchphrase? Group hug, I yeah. think, or something like that. Didn't he used to say, got any chips? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doug in Ohio. What's up, Doc? Well, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah it's a cartoon catchphrases are great. Timeless, yeah. I think. Yeah. I, just, I mean, <laughs> what's up, Doc? is timeless. Yeah. Uh, how about Patrick in Long Island? Hey, Bennington. I got to go with the office, Michael Scott. That's what she said. Yeah. You know, the weird thing is that was like a phrase before that show. It was. So right. It was almost like he's using a tired bit that's exactly right. what it was you know? and then people and then started people saying started saying it, it again. to this day right yeah and then like yeah people still do it it's the nbc store still sells that kind of stuff that's what she right. said stuff oh, okay, okay. That's and they're bringing said, back said. like they're acting like almost like it's musty comedy so their commercials this year are all the great old school hit comedies People from that coming back right. and talking about how great, you know, Thursday nights <laughs> oh, are and yeah, shit like sure that. I don't know. What's NBC's big show now? They they have a new one. Well, The Good Place has been their big show. That's done. And that's done. Coming back, some show called Sunnyside with Cal Penn. That's like he's a councilman. On the sunny side <laughs> of the street. The it's Superstore loose. is pretty hot. I don't think so. I mean, it might be on TV, they, but they don't I don't have, hear anybody talking about it. They don't have any no. show that's like that cultural hit anymore. It's like CBS gets all of those, basically. I watched one episode of Superstore. That was a mistake. <laughs> CBS has that show this year I think is going to be big, The Fat Guy and the African. Bob Hart, Abishola. <laughs> Just oh looks like... Oh, my God. Yeah. Not good. Not a good situation. Everything about that was cringy, watching that trailer. Yeah. I saw the trailer, and I'm like... I think this could get some blowback. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John in Buffalo. Hey, Banks, I've got three that are potentials from one show. It's a cartoon right. from Scooby-Doo. Shaggy used to always say Zoinks, and Velma would say Jinkies. Jinkies was my Scooby favorite. And Scooby would always go with the rut row. Yeah, they well, all... Well, rut row really belongs to Astro from the Jetsons, right? Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, they that they, they yeah. both true. said it, right? Yeah. And then there was even uh, another dog... Mm, I'm not sure. Maybe it was Chopper from Yankee and Chopper. <laughs> uh, I think of all of those. Ruh -roh. Jinkies was the best. Yeah. Jinkies. Um, you liked her because she wore glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nathan in New York. Hey, guys. I'm going to have to go with Alf and no problemo. That was a pretty good impression of Alf, and I've never yeah. really watched the show much. You know? I I have not seen many episodes, and even there's when you an, think back on it, it seems like kind of like a fever dream that that was even a show. <laughs> Dude, there's an outtakes thing on YouTube where Alf is being really racist and uh, homophobic. And really? it was like something that they used to do to crack the audience up. No, I'm I'm not going to put it on the show, Chris. Uh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like those days have passed. We go, hey, listen to this funny racist and homophobic thing. Uh, Dennis in Long Island. Uh, get smart. Missed by that much. Missed it by that yeah, much. Yeah, it's a good one. And then he would go, ruh <laughs> <laughs> Dog Dogman. Uh, let's go to Derek in Arizona. We're talking TV catchphrases. Hey, Bankton. Hey. Uh, 
you bastards, you killed Kenny from South Park. Oh, ma major. Great. Monster big fucking thing. I might have even had a you killed Kenny t-shirt. I think I did. When I was in middle school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did the shit used to say? Remember that was... Party a, ho! Yeah, that okay. was... That that was Merch City oh, when yeah. that yeah. thing yeah. started. Mr. And in radio, it was fucking Drop City. Like, those drops got used... Like Hartman. Every yeah. fucking station. Every um, rock station. I also liked as a catchphrase, mm guy. That was good. Mm -guy. Mm -guy. And Towelie had the, you want to get high? You want to get high? <laughs> You guys want to get high? <laughs> no, they make they make it like they make funny shows, and look at them. They're <laughs> hack as fuck. I mean, that shit is so silly. That's why when Bill Hader was on uh, and said that, no, you know, comedy should never hurt anybody's feelings. I'm like, you fucking wrote for South Park that year. Yeah. That's the meanest fucking show that's <laughs> ever been done. Fucking cool. Yeah. When, like, South Park and SNL both are in your past, like, you know that you've made right. fun of tons of people. You know people yeah. have cried and said, do I really talk like that? <laughs> am I really that bad? Well, like we this? all laughed. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, Dave in Orlando. Hey, Gail. Thank hey. You. How's yeah. it going? Um, how about Hannibal from the A-Team? When he used to say, I love it when a plan comes together. Yeah, that was a uh, thing. Um, the A team, yeah, eighties, uh, which uh, had Mister uh, T on it, but Hannibal was the guy. I guess he was the brains of the operation. Yeah, he was the. I can't say I watched mo any of it, but I know I know a little bit about it. Yeah, I watched it. a couple episodes of it. it. Seems like such a weird catchphrase, right? Like it's, it doesn't have a zip to it. Well, they would say it towards the end of the show. <laughs> I know, like but they... it's still weird. <laughs> no, it's weird. Like it's a weird thing. Like if you knew someone personally who kept saying that. I like, think it's weird you... when you're not a comedy and you have a catchphrase. That's right. a fucking crazy one. Ralph and Queens. Yeah, how you doing, guys? Uh, remember Kojak? Who loves you, baby? Sucking on a lollipop. He would suck on a lollipop, and he would say, "Who loves you, baby?" So inappropriately, like it would make zero what is that fucking mean? sense. What is the context yeah. of that? Just put in "Who loves you, baby." See I want to. Yeah, I actually want to see. Yeah, him say it. I mean, I guess it was like he had uh, figured something out. But right, here we go. All right, here's here comes Kojak. <laughs> Hey, fish! Who loves you, baby? You're beautiful. <laughs> so he just busted him. Get it now? <laughs> See if you can find any more. Yeah. Bizarre. But he would also do that on commercials and. All right, here's some more Kojak. How many times do I gotta tell you? This guy was monstrous. Yeah, hello, Tennessee. Hello, indeed. Now tell me this, Frenchie. And this is off the record. Who's your backer this week? Coochie Kid was a uh, recurring too. Unfortunately, he had already done Who Loves You. <laughs> Who Loves You. Right before that. <laughs> Who Loves You. Baby. I've never seen an episode. Well, it was major. It was gigantic. I think the Greeks loved them too. I think he was a Greek yeah. or something. He, but he, seemed, Ballas, yeah. he seemed like an Arab to me. <laughs> Didn't he also like push like a credit card or something? Yeah, he sold credit cards. <laughs> he uh, also it used to be if you Players Club was a big thing. That, so if you went so to fucking Vegas, <laughs> you would get there. Hey, let me tell you something about this little place you stay in. You'd be on your TV. <laughs> and he would try to teach you how to fucking play craps and stuff. <laughs> it was fucking. Hilarious. I think he was even dead, and I saw that. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Alan in Montreal. Hey, I got one that, uh, well, Howard Stern uses. It was from the Larry Sanders show, Hey Now. Hey Now. Hey Now. Hey Now. Hey Now. And that was Says like, applesauce. and then like, there was a great one where Larry was like, uh, hey, what, what is that even, why do you do that? He was like, hey now. He goes, why are you doing that? What does it mean? <laughs> he goes, you know, how did that come together? 
And it was just like he couldn't take the fact that this guy would say hey now too much. It was fucking hilarious. It's just like, you never know, notice like your friend is onto something. You're yeah. just like, would you fucking stop it? It's really embarrassing. To her. Eric in New Jersey. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Hey. 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 You did it. <laughs> What's up, Eric? You think that you. Oh, yeah, this was Archie Bunker would call his wife a fucking dingbat, <laughs> called his son-in-law meathead. And, but then he liked his daughter. He called her little Goyle. And this is how hard. I mean, you ever, you know Queens. You lived there your whole life. You yeah. ever hear anybody say Goyle? No, that's no. insane. That's that's too much. I mean, it's in Astoria is where the show was supposed yes. to be. Yes. No, you no could throw said, a rock no. to it from your fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian in Queens. Yeah, hey, I got Regis Philbin with, uh, is that your final answer? Well, that's a good one because yeah. uh, there's no reason uh, that you have to do that all the time. No, there's no reason to have a catchphrase on I, a game I, show. I have to do a catchphrase tonight at Big J's show down at the stand, and I have to tell a story. I think it's called The Worst is the name of it, and I have to start it with The Worst, you yeah. know, and right. then it's up to me. I think I could say Night of My Life or... The worst thing that ever happened but to me. It has to be the worst. Yeah. But then just hit it like really hard, like the worst. The worst. <laughs> we didn't do that to show. I'll go like this. That was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know I was going to get even worse. <laughs> uh, our buddy Lewis in Manhattan. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Uh, before I get to my catchphrase, uh, Telly Savalas, he was also. Responsible for um, Austin Powers, not Austin Powers, but the guy who played uh, the villain Austin Powers. He was responsible for his look because then he played a Bond villain, uh, Blumfeld. Yeah, I don't, I mean, he played a lot of stuff. I think he was in the, what's that fucking, uh, Earl will know it. Earl, what's the, like, the escape film? Oh, yeah, 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 Escape from Alcatraz or something. No, the one with Steve McQueen. Oh, yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, it's a does great it. escape, I guess. Yeah, he was always escape. like the shitty guy in the group. There would be like a group of people and he would be the worst. Like he was just this fucking, right. you know, below the line character actor. <laughs> then he becomes Kojak and then who loves you, baby? <laughs> you see this watch right here? You go on fucking talk show. He would just be blinged out. Yeah, and you can see how lazy it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of black people in the 70s loved that guy. I think oh, yeah. Black. <laughs> yeah. But um, my catchphrase is uh, Tootie from Facts of Life. I think she used to say it for herself. She used to say, ooh, I'm in trouble. And then sometimes <laughs> she would change it and say, ooh, you're in trouble. Like, that yeah. was all <laughs> Everything has to do with trouble with Tootie. <laughs> yeah. um, it's adorable. Uh, Shrekalov wrote to her and said, what about Earl's other uh, catchphrase that he had? Peace, ho. <laughs> that was a good one, too. <laughs> ba 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 Bo, bo, bo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did I eat all the chips? <laughs> you did. <laughs> oh, you still not eating chips? Uh, no, I am not. Because you let them You're bully you into getting... You're still tweeting about it, though. You had a brand, and then you let them bully you into getting rid of your brand. What if they start teasing you about wearing all black clothes? Would you start wearing purple? <laughs> I would stay with the black. The purple one, we could call you. Thanks for being honest. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought you were uh, still eating chips because I saw you were still tweeting about it. Yeah, Chip Sherrill still says eating chips again. Yeah, uh, constantly. I just got the thing of what I'm supposed to say. Okay. I'm going to tell you a story about the worst, and then I come out. Right. I have no idea what I'm going to tell you. My <laughs> life has been so blessed. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed. Uh, Mark in Wisconsin. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Love the show. Yeah, it's good. The plane, the plane. That was a big one. He had to say the plane every week. That must have been used a lot at airports. The plane. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we've heard that. We're one. getting on the plane, everybody. <laughs> Stephen P. A. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Now I think she only said that once, though. Really? That's, yeah. I thought she said it all the time. I think it was just in one episode, but people caught on. When it started to be on an SNL parody. Oh, shit. Yeah. In my mind, I was like, she was saying it like every couple episodes. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I don't think so. Um, just like the same with yada, yada, yada was just one episode of Seinfeld. Right. But they treated and, it like a catchphrase. Yeah. The rest of the world, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Marsha, 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 only one episode. 
Thank wow. you. The episode, Her Sister's Shadow. And then remember this one, Chris, this yeah. was yours. Uh, Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. And then also, back up, brah. <laughs> brah. <laughs> da, brah. Back up, brah. <laughs> Uh, let's go to Brad in New Jersey. Hey, guys. Yeah. Um, Carmine the Big Ragu on Laverne and Shirley used to sing <laughs> his catchphrase, going rags. What was it? I go from rags. I to could have gone from rags to riches. <laughs> he would just sing that, which was an actual song. <laughs> the Big Ragu <laughs> fucking blue. There's a guy with zero talent, got like a nine-year runoff that fucking show. <laughs> and I remember, um... Lenny and Squiggy would call him the Big Raccoon instead of the Big Raccoon. <laughs> it's probably the Big Raccoon. Uh, he had nothing. But for some reason, they acted like he was good looking. Look at him. That's really weird. That's, That's a strange yeah. choice. He was sold as the hot guy. <laughs> Why? This fucking guy? Yeah. Why would he ever be that? This was a, you have to remember, this was the time when the biggest movie stars were De Niro and Pacino. So Italian was really in. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Look at the thickness of neck, too. Yeah. I mean, that's a really thick neck for someone who's supposed to be a sex I symbol. think he came in as like a Broadway dancer or something, too, because he used to do, um, I don't want to say effeminate dancing because I'm woke, <laughs> but kind of dancing that you wouldn't Oh, look, I can see him there. there. He's got some moves. Where? See there in the white shirt, Chris, where he's dancing? I mean, you can see he obviously oh, yeah, has yeah. some uh But that's like training. Broadway dancing. Yeah, exactly. No real people dance like that. Uh, Tom the Cop. What up, buddies? Hey, hey, buddy. Good good to hear from you. Yeah, my favorite, probably not the most appropriate thing for me to be saying in uniform, is paint the taint from oh, Ramsey. We're going to paint the taint. taint. <laughs> Why didn't I catch on bigger? <laughs> I wish it had. Why aren't we selling paint the taint t-shirts? <laughs> uh, Mike in Ontario. Hey, uh... So uh, there used to be a show I used to watch as a kid with my dad. It was uh, Super Dave Osborne. And he'd always come out and introduce the uh, act as, uh, it's so great you're going to knock your socks off. I never remember uh, that was his oh, catchphrase. I used yeah. to love Super Dave, though. Just just, just uh, something I remember. Yeah, cool. Uh, Tommy in Chicago. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Um, Seinfeld, I know this is just the one episode also, but uh, the soup not be no soup for you. Yeah, it had staying power. There's despite a the, uh, one episode. There's a college that if somebody misses a free throw, they yell "no soup for you." <laughs> really? Uh, it's very fucking funny. Uh, I have a favorite that wasn't mentioned yet. Okay. I would say Job from Arrested Development. Uh, the shit. Now it just dropped out of my head. What's this of um, fucking... Oh, my God. The guy in a $5,000 suit. No, not that one. Oh, uh, oh. I'm going to go in the army. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> that was oh, his yeah. reoccurring... I've made, I've made a, a huge, huge mistake. mistake. <laughs> the way he would talk all the time. Everything was so I've shitty. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> I've never liked him since he divorced his wife. No. I feel you like just, it's 100% blame... his fault. <laughs> 100 fucking percent. She's so adorable. I love her. Uh, Val in New York. Hey, how about Good Night John Boy from the Waltons? Oh, that was always sweet. And then people would say, like, if you were camping together, they would all say, Good Night John Boy. And Aww. we'd all laugh at how fucking witty it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric in Baton Rouge. Hey, why can't I click it? Uh, yeah, one of the best sketch shows ever, Chappelle's show, Rick James, bitch. I'm Rick James, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. The real Rick James is like, what is he doing? <laughs> I didn't say that. I never said that. <laughs> uh, Jonathan in NYC. One of the best. When, when Right after Soul Train, we just get done. Don Cornelius going, peace, love, and soul. Oh, yeah. But that was like a sign-off more than a catchphrase. Right. Yeah. Peace, That's... love, and soul, everybody. Okay. Then... Yeah. And then my <laughs> yeah, other thing, this right. was more of a catchphrase that he used to do that I like. If any band would come on, he'd be like this. So introduce yourselves. <laughs> he would never learn the names. Yeah, come on. Like, so introduce yourselves. And they'd be like, I'm Mickey. I'm Tommy. I'm Bill. You know what I mean? They would all go no. through these young black kids. All right, man. You guys are unbelievable. Really bringing it. Introduce yourselves. <laughs> come 
on. Do a little prep. Yeah. <laughs> Scott in Illinois. Yeah, I'm surprised Earl didn't uh, say this one. It's probably his favorite show ever. But Fat Albert. <laughs> yeah, Fat Albert. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to rape you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was funny then. Yeah. Uh, it really was. Hey, Bamamba, she b- b- took the p- pill, but by the mistake. But. Hey, 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 those guys should rape her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul in New Jersey. How about uh, Beretta from the 70s? He always said that's the name of that tune. You can put that in the bank. He always had catchphrases. He was always very <laughs> cool with people. And uh, he... <laughs> Uh, had like a, a guy who would rap to him, a pimp, right? Yeah. And then he would always come around. The guy never wanted to tell him what was going on. And he would threaten him a little bit. Every time? Yeah. Wait. He would be gone. Beretta just had a parrot? Yeah, he had a parrot. Big fucking parrot. Give us a little video of Beretta. Just I put in that's the name of that tune. <laughs> and then he would go on TV, right? And he would act like he was Beretta. Right. Like he would come on, he would have a uh, cigarette that he never lit up and all that. And he, but if you watch, he was in the Little Rascals, which means that when he was like eight, he lived in LA. So how did he become this kind of Brooklyn right. 70s guy <laughs> during the 70s? It's one thing for him to play that character, but he would come on Johnny Carson <laughs> and, you know, just still act like that. I'm finding full episodes of Beretta, but not anything of him isolates. That's really weird. You can't find that. That maybe it's because you have TV show instead of. And I tried just the yeah. uh, just catchphrase, but no. This look is, at all the fucking great people in this. It's a great episode. He's got fucking Fred Williamson bringing the whole fucking thing down. <laughs> all right, never mind. Can't do it, Chris. Al, you're on Bennington. Hey guys, hey. I got uh, Jim Neighbors, Gomer Pyle, Shazam, Shazam, Shazam. Yeah, he would say Shazam, Shazam for no apparent reason at all. <laughs> See, that's like one that's like uh, sounds so forced. It it's, was. It's much like the bazinga of today, where you're like, why would anyone say bazinga? I also don't think bazinga got used that much. Really, you think yeah. it was just a couple times? Yeah, I, I think... thought like from what I could tell, I thought it was just like every episode was bazinga. Is well, that how we talk? I think it caught on that big because it was it was one of the last like mainstream shows left on TV. Right. You know, they would get fucking like fifteen, eighteen million people seeing it. Now most shows have like four hundred ninety <laughs> people watching it. Uh, uh, was this one for you, Vito? He he would say yeah. He like would say bazinga when he made a joke. Yeah. And like he pulled like a, a prank. Burn. Like, right. yeah, he would say like, oh, I pulled a prank. You'll know I make a joke when I say my catchphrase bazinga. He actually said it was his catchphrase. <laughs> now, Chris, did you look up how many times he said it? I'm counting right now. Because I remember one time that he was in a ball pit and he kept bouncing out going, bazinga. And he'd go back under. And it was pretty funny. <laughs> Looks like it was used in 14 episodes. The 14. Word that's decent. It's, but out of the what? 150 ten, episodes? 10 years. Like that, yeah. 11 or 10 years? Yeah, that's 200 episodes and he did 14. Right. Like in a real catchphrase, I think you got to do it almost every episode. Okay. Jeremy in uh, Maryland has a personal favorite of mine. Yeah. Uh, it's from the old TV show The State on MTV. The Louie, I want to dip my balls in it. <laughs> I want to dip my balls oh, in it. Again, kind of making fun of ridiculous catchphrases. And yet it's still time taking full exa- <laughs> advantage of what it means to have a catchphrase. Uh, Ryan and Philly. Yo, I got two. Yeah. First one was gigantic. How about Bart Simpson? Don't have a cow, man. Well, that was uh, Chris yeah. used to say that to me all the time when I yeah. get mad at him. <laughs> cool. me, like, Don't have a cow. Yeah, that was all the time. Yeah. And then the second one is Chris Stanley when he used to always say, "Yo, I'll blow you for a dollar." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it was bigger. <laughs> uh, Frank in New Jersey. What the dick? <laughs> hey guys, how are you? Hey, hey Frank, how's it going? Right. What is your uh, catchphrase? From the Incredible Hulk, don't make me angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. I think he uh, should have said, don't make me hangry. <laughs> and just held up a little fucking... What do they try to sell as if it's like good for you, like a candy bar of some kind? Yeah, Snickers. Yeah, yeah. don't make me hangry. See? <laughs> that Snickers really helps me out. <laughs> it just goes so... You're so addicted to sugar right. that you got to eat get, a Snickers you're bar. You're psychotic. Just to fucking come down. 
<laughs> uh, Glenn in Canada. Yabba dabba do. Well, that was big. Yeah. 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 Of course. Of Fred, course. Fl- Fred Flintstone. Oh, is that who did it? Oh. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, Bolo, Indiana. Laughing. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. Suck it to me. <laughs> Suck it to me. Here come the judge. They fucking love that. Yeah. <laughs> It was, and then I, I, I had heard "suck it to me" and thought it was "fuck it to me," and then I said "fuck it to me" in front of my parents. And I think even another kid's parents, and they were freaked out. When I was or is saying, that a, the, uh, just fucking dinner with everybody? But you, but you knew that you weren't allowed to say "fuck," so why did you think you could get away with "fuck it to me"? I thought it was okay. <laughs> Mike in Florida. Oh, Rob! Oh, nice. Uh, the old Dick Van Dyke yeah. show. You know, I, there was a song called Sock It To Me Baby, right? Did you ever hear it? Mitch no. Ryder? So around the same time that came out, uh, he puts out a song called Sock It To Me Baby. But there's a thing in it where he goes, every time you kiss me, I think this is the line, and we used to think he said, wait, every time I see it, we used to think he said, like a fuck. And me and my cousins would sing that. <laughs> and then we got caught singing it. All right, you got it? I have, I have the song. I don't have a... Just, it just hit it. By the way, the song is great. great because it's one of the few songs that will use a slide whistle <laughs> to great underused. success. Highly underused. Um, so you guys dig that, huh? Fucking fantastic. That was so good. You want to hear something weird? I'm, I'm, I'm sure I've never told you guys. I opened for him once in the, like, in the 80s. Really? It was so fucking cool. <laughs> so I don't know what you, you guys ever hear when um, Springsteen did the Detroit medley. With, 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 I think it was at the No Nukes concert. And basically covered a bunch of his uh-huh. songs, right? And everybody's like, oh, this is fantastic. And they were saying to Mitch, how do you like it? And he goes, what am I supposed to do now, die? Is that the fucking point of this? <laughs> These are all my songs <laughs> that he shoves together. But so I, I get this call. Do you want to open the show? And I'm like, fuck yeah. So I go over. And then the cool thing about it was, you know, I did my 20 minutes or whatever, and then I fucking sat on the side of the stage, watch him come out, 
And he was like really still doing like a whole fucking question mark and Mysterians look, you know, he had, you know, right. he was just fucking killing it. And then he did a cover of um, Take Me to the River that was the best fucking thing I ever saw in my life. Wow. I'm going, this fucking guy should be the biggest fucking thing ever, you know? And then later we did a, a Ron and Ron show uh, and we booked him to come in and do uh -huh. like a song or two. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, he was I fucking whacked. He was crazy, man. So fucking crazy, fucking talented. If you go and look his stuff up, there's like so many listenable songs that yeah. he did. That was great. But he had this, you know, his whole thing was like that underground garage thing that probably lasted from 64 yeah, to maybe such, early 67. Such a short window. Yeah. Um, And I love, you know, anytime it has a kind of resurgence. Yeah. Like, I feel like that, that happens where, like, that kind of sound starts to, like, creep its way back in. Right. Because it's, like, so pure to me. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's literally garage rock. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's everything. And you can hear that he's almost, uh, you know, doing a James Brown impression the yeah, way he sings. definitely. But anyway, me and my cousins would sing, every time you kiss me, it's like a fuck. And then <laughs> uh, we got yelled at. And then my brother comes over and is like, it's like a punch. Look at the line before it. <laughs> Honey bunch. Every time you kiss me. Why would he say fuck? <laughs> I, don't know. I thought that, listen. It's such a good kiss. Yeah, so might as well be a fuck. Yeah, who wants to get get kissed like a punch? <laughs> I wouldn't thank you for that. No, I wouldn't. That's thank my catchphrase. <laughs> Can I do that? Can I say fuck? <laughs> I don't even know if anyone can get mad at a little kid for uh, saying fuck these days. No, it's too funny. Yeah, like when a kid says like fuck, it. it's hilarious. Um, Preston. You know, Chris not only likes it when uh, they said he likes it when they do it. <laughs> oh no, Chris! Oh no! I'm going to tell you a story about the worst thing that ever happened to me: AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are we supposed to tell something terrible? Yeah, or something I mean, that's what I was going to ask you: Is it like, is it a being overly dramatic about something that you shouldn't say is the worst thing. I can't thing. imagine. Or like you actually talking about like a tragedy and trying to make it funny. Jay stays on stage with you, so maybe he'll make it funny. So you're just going to tell a sad monologue. Maybe you should just cry. I, I, well, I'm going to tell you about the worst day of my life. September 11th, <laughs> 2001. It happened to me, but it also happened to you. And you. And you. <laughs> and you. And you. <laughs> And you. <laughs> Jay's just like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? <laughs> I lose my place. And you. And you. <laughs> uh, Preston has another uh, TV catchphrase for us. Preston. What's up, guys? Hey. Uh, the, 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 the one I was thinking about was the Three Stooges when Mo would just get fed up and just, why I oughta? Why I ought to bonk, bonk them on the head. Yeah, they had a bunch of those. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sally Starr used to have to come on and say, those are rubber hammers, so don't hit your <laughs> brother with it. So I guess some kid, had, you know, sure. and then poked his little sister in the eye and his little brother in the head with a fucking hammer. Like it was fun. Uh, Steve in New Jersey. Yeah, I've got another Super Dave one on every episode. Whatever kind of contraption he built, he would say that it was built with genuine Saskatchewan seal skin binding. He's so and fucking funny. I've got two others that, it, that exist still in my family from a very famous radio show in Florida. Uh, we still say, see ya. See ya. And we still say, things are Vulcan crazy. Yeah. Or oh, yeah. you're Vulcan out of your mind. Yeah. And for tonight's show, how about the worst thing my daughter ever did that would embarrass the shit out of her and she would kill me if I said it on stage. Jeez, I don't know. Have you done embarrassing things? Um, I mean, just your musical taste. <laughs> <laughs> Run uh, very scholar. I don't, uh, I don't get embarrassed very easily. So I don't know if like, if you told a story. Yeah, shameless, you yeah. could basically say. I'm pretty shameless. Um, I'm doing another show tonight that it's for... Well, it's actually uh, Aruba asked me to 
do the show, but I got to find. So it's for like adults with mental whatever illness or something. And then today he just texts me a list of words to not say. Oh. And I would never say these words, <laughs> let alone in front of the people who had the affliction. I need to, oh I need to see the words so badly that somebody would have to send these out. <laughs> um, he's like, I don't, I know I don't have to tell, but this vet benefits mentally challenged adults. Um, but the organization doesn't want any comics to say things like, and just look at these words. Okay, let's see what they are. Don't say them. <laughs> I'm not going to. Because <laughs> it's an unforgiving world we live in. <laughs> Why would you say that? I would in never that say context. it under any context. Right. <laughs> I don't even think I call Chris that. Wow. I like how Ray is like, uh, I know I don't have to tell you guys, but why are you doing yeah. it then? If I were you, I would just say, and for that, I'm out. Uh, I'll go judge the bit after I do it. <laughs> You'll see. You'll all be laughing. Free speech. You know, I'm allowed to say whatever I want. I like at the end, he actually puts the term, uh, et cetera. <laughs> Guess what? I'm not going to mention <laughs> any of the things that you're talking about. <laughs> I'm not even going to bring up the subject. One of them, I would say, doesn't even get said anymore. Yeah, you know, know what I mean? Like, it's almost like an outdated uh, It is. It was insult. like a 50s thing, and then it came back during probably 80s. Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to say. Um, all right. Oh, and they used it once in Meatballs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Um, I'm going to go to JoJo in Kansas City. JoJo. JoJo Mojo. <laughs> hey. All right. Uh, two real quick ones. Gail, second best job is come on. Oh, yeah. And then, Good one. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Madman, when Don Draper was about to get ready to cheat on Betty, he would lean in and go, what are we doing here? And I, then he would cheat on Betty. I didn't remember that he said that. It was like a yeah. reoccurring one of thing. Our so Don Draper was like a cheater. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, constantly. he's uh he's a very flawed character. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah. Why like Chris cheats on his girlfriend? I don't. Yeah, you do. I he don't. said he, he. You know what he said to me? He goes, what? "Eating ain't cheating, boss. Eating ain't cheating." <laughs> That's a gross catchphrase, <laughs> yeah, Chris. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you of... should say that yeah. to any of your and coworkers. I don't remember saying. And then that. here's another Chris catchphrase. What's that? Uh, when he farts, he goes, "That one had a tail on it." <laughs> I'm going to puke. <laughs> and you should fart so much that you need a catchphrase for it. It's constant. <laughs> Sometimes he'll just say, did somebody step on a duck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Owen, Owen in New York. Owen in New York. <laughs> Owen. How you doing? Uh, so Stupid idiot. I have a, so I have this catchphrase. I don't know where it's from. I know who said it, but it's I pity the fool. A pity the fool. That's Mr. T. Yeah. Also from the A. 18. 18. Yeah. I was going to say the A train, but that's actually <laughs> a train that we have to get on here. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what about the uh, Earl's catchphrases? Didn't you think of one? Um, I'm going to ask him right now. Earl, what would you say is your number one catchphrase? I feel like uh, I have one. Like, yeah. He says very much so. Fucking. Oh constantly. yeah, he does oh. say very much. Fucking so. constantly. Yeah. Um, I've got one for him. Yeah. Uh, when he says, uh, "I respectfully decline." Yeah, he does <laughs> that's that. another one. What's another one for humbly you? Humbly and respectfully decline. Well, you took it on humbly. Oh, uh, you. I always try to say humbly and respectfully decline. And you also say not at all. Not at, at least all. Every I show, he'll say not at all. I'll be like, did you do that? Not at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you like something, very much so. Very, very much, much so. so. Very much so. And peace out. WMEW, peace out. And, and best part of my day. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I love best when he used part. to say that. I don't think he was going to say humbly and respectfully. Yeah, he wasn't. Decline. What were you going to say, though? I was going to say humbly and respectfully. I mean, honestly. I don't know. You never once say something without somebody saying I'm it being... seconds before. But now you keep thinking of other stuff. Instead of stop, instead of being the stick in the spokes, be another spoke. Or be a baseball card making fucking noise. In the <laughs> oh, spoke. that's the coolest part. Yeah. And a lot of people thought I had a fucking motor on my <laughs> I think Earl used to say, smoke my dick a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but like he used to say it like, well, smoke my dick. Yeah. 
in the southern accent. <laughs> uh, you don't like to join in, Earl? You don't like to say something fresh and new? I have no response to that. That's another one I always say. Oh, I remember one he, he said all the time. He said when he would uh, when he walks in every day, he says, Black at it again. <laughs> Why? <laughs> black at it again? Yeah. All right, because he's the black guy? Yeah, I say it like I, 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 don't, cool I tell one, him, like, I think this is inappropriate for an office. <laughs> <laughs> then he says, Black off me, Stanley. <laughs> oh, were you familiar with Mitch Ryder? Very, very much so. Uh, <laughs> hack. Why didn't you jump in then? No, I was, I was taking calls, but no, I remember. Switch out with that other motherfucker. <laughs>